Okay, so in this video, we're going to do a review of absolute value equations and inequalities. We're going to do it all in one video. So I'm going to start by summarizing the different possible cases, and I'm just going to go straight into the summary. So I'm doing this for the sake of time to keep this video short. If you want to know why this works like this, that's a longer explanation. And I have full lesson videos where I break down the why of this. But okay, so with absolute value equations and inequalities. So let's say you've got an equation. So something like the absolute value of x equals k where k is some number. So with equations where you have an equal sign, you break into really two cases. So break into, we'll say maybe two equations. So the first equation is x equals k and then the second equation is x equals negative k. So that's how you're going to break it up. Now this is very important for this next part. X has to be on the left side for this to work. But if you have less than K or less than or equal to K, so once you have less than, so now you're going to have a three part inequality. And so you'll break this into negative K is less than X, which is less than K or less than or equal to. And I'll show you how this all works in a second. And then finally, if you have the greater than case, so X is greater than K, or greater than or equal to. So the way that you set that up is two inequalities. Um, and so that breaks into X is greater than K or X is less than negative K. So it's very important that you identify the case and that you have this set up properly. Once you have that set up, then you can like, you'll know how to, you know, set up the problem. I felt like that's really redundant. Okay. Anyway, so let's jump into an example. So I've got the absolute value of X plus three equals five. So this is obviously an equation. There's a quality. So I want to break into these two equations here. So the way that I'm going to set this up is I'm going to set up X plus three equals five and X plus three equals negative five. So that's what I mean by breaking into two equations. And so then it's just a matter of solving. So if I subtract three from both sides here, one solution I get is X equals two. And if I subtract three from both sides here, the other solution I get is X equals negative eight. So I have these two solutions, X equals two and X equals negative eight. Okay, so now if we pivot to B, so I've got the absolute value of two X minus four is greater than or equal to six. So now this is an inequality. And so this, is going to be my setup in this case. So I'm going to set up these two different inequalities. And when you have inequalities, then you're also going to have to do usually interval notation. So a lot of times it comes with a number line. So the way that I'm going to set this up, 2x minus 4 is greater than 6. So it's like you just drop the inequality. And then the other one is 2x minus 4 is less than or equal to negative 6. So notice that I both flipped the inequality and then I wrote a negative number. Now from here, you just solve like a normal inequality. So if I add four to both sides, so this particular inequality will become two X is greater than or equal to 10. And this inequality will become two X is less than or equal to negative two. So that's me adding four to both sides. And then if I divide both sides by two, I get X is greater than or equal to five or X is less than or equal to negative one. So those are my two solutions and I, I want to have just or kind of going down through all that. Now you have to represent this in interval notation. So to do that, I think it's best to draw a little number line. So let me clear a little space here. All right. So now if I draw my number line, so let me just note here's negative one, here's five. So I want to plot both of these inequalities on here. So for negative one, negative one will get a square bracket going this way. So here's the less than or equal to, and then here's greater than or equal to five. So from the number line, now I can come up with my interval notation. So I'm starting here. Remember this side, this way, this is the negative infinity direction. This is the positive infinity direction. So when, it, when I read this from left to right, like a book, I start on the negative infinity side, negative infinity always gets a round bracket. I continue all the way until I get to negative one and I give a square bracket because negative one is included. And then I union that with five to infinity. 
And so there you have it. So when you have equality, you don't have to worry about this, but when you have an inequality, you have to set up the interval notation. So it's just kind of assumed. So let's keep going with some more examples. So I've got another equality here and I've got something that looks a little trickier. So I've got uh, the absolute value of four X minus two equals the absolute value of six X plus eight. Okay, so the, the, the setup is still in the same spirit, let's say. So first I set up four X minus two equals six X plus eight. And then for the other case, what I'm gonna do is four X minus two equals negative six X plus eight. So notice how I set this up. So this, so one side has to be negative. And since I have an entire expression here, I had to put parentheses around this. So this equation becomes negative six X minus eight. So you kind of take all the opposite symbols on one side. But after that, you just finish solving this. So I would recommend maybe just pausing and trying to solve this on your own. So I'm gonna go ahead and solve. So I'll go ahead and subtract off the four X I'll subtract off the 8x, so I get 2x equals negative 10, and if I divide both sides by 2, I get x equals negative 5. And then for this other one, so let's see, I'll add 6x, and I'll add 2, so I get 10x equals negative 6, so I get x equals negative 6 over 10, which will simplify to um, negative 3 over 5. So there are my two solutions, and this is, um, these are the two solutions and I don't need since it's equality I don't have to worry about number lines or anything like that alrighty so for B here so now I have an inequality so that like the second you see inequality you know that you're gonna have to bust out the number line interval notation all that good stuff so that is just automatically assumed um, and then this is a less than so I've got absolute value of 5x minus 2 plus 1 is less than 9 okay so just to reiterate what the rule was so first of all we've got less than. So if you go back to that chart, that that's really like going to tell us the setup. So the setup then is going to work like this. So this is what our our handy little our handy dandy little chart was telling us. So, okay, here's the deal. When you set this up, you have to have the absolute value isolated. And so when we look at this particular problem, we don't have the absolute value isolated, right? Because we have this extra plus one. So we've got to get rid of that. So to do that, we're going to subtract one from each side so that I've got um, absolute value of five X minus two is less than eight. And then I can bust out this little setup. And so then that's going to be negative eight is less than five X minus two, which is less than eight. And from here, now we just, you know, do what we do. So I'm going to go ahead and just add the two to all sides. And then I can divide everything by five so that I get X is between negative six over five and two. Alrighty. And so now um, I need to make a number line. And what this is really getting at is that X is between negative six fifths and two. So if you interpret your answer like that, I think it actually makes drawing the number line a lot more straightforward. And then I need to shade everything in between. And then since I'm using less than, so less than always gets a round bracket or an open circle, whichever one you want to use, doesn't matter. Open circle, I guess I could put here, whatever. Um, so that's going to be the number line. And so then the interval notation. So if I just read this like a book from left to right, so there's nothing, 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 boop, starts at negative six over five, goes all the way to two. And since the numbers are not included, they both get round brackets. So I've got one more standard example here for you. And again, I recommend that you just pause here. If you're watching this to review, you, you know how to set it up, try to set it up. You get the most out of a review video. If you try, hit play when you think you're ready. So the first thing is I've got to isolate this um, absolute value of two minus X. So I've got to obviously add the one to both sides. So this becomes two minus X is greater than or equal to 10. And now I can set up these two cases. So two minus X is greater than or equal to 10 or two minus X is less than or equal to negative 10. All right, so now to continue solving this, I can subtract the two from each side. So I get these two cases. 
And now here's the tricky part. So notice this is negative x. And when you divide by negative, what happens? Well, the inequality flips, right? So that is the one thing that you've gotta be tricky, or you've gotta be careful with. The inequality actually flips the direction in this case. But that's the only kind of tricky thing that was in this one. So now to finish this problem, so now I'm gonna have, so here's negative eight and here's 12. So where is x less than or equal to negative eight? This way, and it gets a square bracket. And where is x greater than or equal to 12? This way. And so my final answer then will go from negative infinity to negative eight. And we union that from with 12 to infinity. So there you go. All right. So those are kind of like your, your cookie cutter standard cases, but there are a few special cases with absolute value inequalities that can kind of make your head spin a little bit, but I'm gonna go through all of them and talk about why they work out this way. So the first case, we'll look at um, kind of just the same, the same problem over and over with just small tweaks. So the first case here is A, so the absolute value of four X minus one equals negative seven. All right, so here's the deal. What do you know about absolute value? Absolute value is always what? It's always positive, right? So you have to think about logically, what does that mean? Oh, and I'm not a question mark. That should be exclamation part marks. Okay, so absolute value is always positive. So that is true. And so there are some logical consequences about with that fact. So when would an absolute value ever equal negative seven, a negative number? This will never happen. So this never happens. So the solution set is the empty set or the solution set does not exist. Now, contrast that though to the case where I have the absolute value of four X minus one equals zero. So can absolute value equal zero? It can equal zero. So maybe we should say is always positive. Maybe we'll say zero or positive is always zero or positive. I'll add that little note here. So this can equal zero, but it doesn't make any sense to set up two cases, right? So if I have four X minus one equals zero, there's no point in doing negative zero. So that would be my only case. And so in this case, then I could just go ahead and solve this and I would just get the solution that X equals one over four and that would be it. Okay. So let's pivot now to what happens with inequalities and negative numbers. So once again, you have to think about that fact of absolute value is always zero or positive. So logically then, when is absolute value less than a negative number? This never happens again, right? So this never happens. So there are no solutions. This, the solution does not exist. So again, we could say that the, the solution set is just the empty set in this case. But I want you to notice the change in logic now. With this next one, what is this saying? An absolute value is greater than a negative number. When is an absolute value greater than a negative number? That is actually always true, right? Absolute value is always zero or positive. So to say, when does this happen? We don't have to break out any cases, right? This just always works. It's always true because absolute value always has to be positive. So it's always gonna be greater than negative seven or any negative number. So the solution set in this case then goes from negative infinity to infinity or the fancy R, all real numbers if you prefer. Now where this can kind of mess with your head a little bit is when we start getting into the case with zero. So remember, this symbol here means greater than or equal to. So when is this absolute value gonna be greater than or equal to zero? So again, we said that absolute value is always positive or equal to zero. So in this case, when is this true? This is still always true, right? This is literally just going on the idea of what it means to be absolute value. It has to be zero or it has to be greater than zero. And that is what is captured in this inequality. So this has all real numbers, but now here's where your, your head's gonna spin a little. What about this other case? When is this less than or equal to zero? Absolute value, so let's think about this. The part where it's less than zero, 
it's never less than zero, right? But can 4x minus 1 be equal to zero? Because remember, this sign means less than or equal to. This never happens, but this does, right? We actually just proved it. This happens when x equals 1 fourth. So what's interesting about this is that in this particular case, the only solution would be actually equality when x equals 1 fourth. Most of the time when you work in inequalities, you continue to use an inequality. But in this particular case, you get x equals 1 fourth, and that is the solution. So you don't need to create a number line or anything, right? Because you this is this is just the one solution and that's it. It's not like a whole set of solutions like you normally get. All right. So I've got these last two. And I, I think we've talked about this enough that you can probably figure this out. So when would the absolute value of 4x minus 1 be less than 0? Well, that's what we were just talking about, right? This never happens. This This never happens. So it's still just the empty set. This will never be less than zero. Now where this is gonna kind of mess you up a little bit is what about when is this gonna be strictly greater than zero? So what we wanna have happen is we wanna just exclude when this equals zero, right? So this is kind of interesting because if you think about the last one, this was always true. Absolute value, right, is always greater than or equal to zero. But now I want to talk about when is it strictly greater than zero? So when is the one time when this will equal zero? Well, we've talked about that a few times now, right? It's where x equals one fourth. So this is true as long as x, uh, so this, this happens when x does not equal one fourth. So if you wanted to write that in interval notation, you just want to skip over one fourth. So you could also write it like this. So you find the one case where this equals zero, and then you just want to exclude that because we don't want it to equal zero. We want it to stay strictly greater. And so for any other values, this is going to be um, above zero. Yeah. So I know that those are always kind of maddening. So perhaps you feel like this right now. <laughs> but, you know, it's you want to try to just think about, again, what aligns with that that definition and part of it too is quite honestly it's it's practice and just getting used to that line of reasoning so don't feel too bad if you're like oh that's really hard it is it actually is very hard you have to kind of think about it a little bit so no worries if you're struggling so anyways guys that brings us to the end of this video I'll catch you next time